Hello and welcome to Raised by Horror, an all-inclusive podcast for grown-up latchkey kids of all genders and orientations whose proxy parenting was done by horror films and books. We have a tantalizing show full of dreadful delights hosted by our very own Richard Cadry and Violet Blue, and of course me, your production demon, Scotland Simons. Check out RaisedByHorror.com for more info. And now, on with the show. Oh, for fuck's sake. Stop. I just, some <laughs> fucking not... spam phone call. Perfect. No, that's perfect. That's perfect. Good timing. That's absolutely 1,000% perfect. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to a brand new podcast called Raised by Horror where we are going to birth to you out of some strange ethereal demonic womb, um, some kind of podcast, we're going to talk to you about things. But we figured <laughs> before we even get started, we should probably tell you a little bit about who we are, what we're trying to do here. And yeah, just have a little conversation with everybody out there in the world. And yeah, I don't know. I would, Violet, Richard, I guess we should start with talking about who we are, maybe, perhaps. I guess. <laughs> Makes sense. Makes sense. Ah, getting started is the hardest part. It it's the is. worst. It's the hundred percent the worst. I know. Well, my name is Violet Blue, and I'm an author and a journalist, and I love horror. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Like it is a part of me, a part of who I am, and. It's just, I think about it all the time. I watch horror films all the time. I read horror books all the time. And I have, I could just go on and on and on about all the reasons that I do all of those things. But it's, it's important to me. Mm -hmm. It's really important to me. And I think that's one of the things that has bonded Richard and I, for sure, like over the years, like Richard and I have known each other for decades. Yeah. And <laughs> we, like he's obviously, you know, well-established horror writer, but we bonded personally as friends. Um, we were living, we lived in San Francisco together at the same time. And one of the things that we used to do before the pandemic was we would get together, get some whiskey and watch horror films together. Mm -hmm. And it was a blast. And I would we'd constantly be recommending horror films to each other and having conversations about it. And Scotland and I have also been friends for over a decade, at least, I believe. At least. Like, I, I actually can't remember where I met either of you at this point. It's been so long. And we're so, <laughs> Me neither. We're, we're just like ancient crypt keepers from the goth scenes. But like, exactly. But like one of the, <laughs> one of the things about my friendship with Scotland is that um, Scotland isn't a horror person. I'm a baby I'm bat. So, I, I know. <laughs> And but one of the amazing and fun things about my friendship with Scotland has been constantly looking for films to watch with her that are horror but not horror. So it's like horror films that people who don't like horror will watch, and that's been a super fun side project for years and years and years and years. So that's a little bit about me, <laughs> <laughs> Richard. How about you? Uh, I'm Richard Cadry, and I write horror. Uh, I've written horror books, stories, film stuff, and yeah, like Violet and Scott, uh, well, not less so Scotland, but like Violet, I love horror. I was raised with horror. Monsters are my first friends. Uh, I grew up in a, a latchkey kid situation, so the Creature from the Black Lagoon and Frankenstein and all of them were my earliest friends, and I hope that in this podcast we can bring that to other people we want to bring weird stuff to weird people and uh in as nice a way as possible it's rad I and mean, that's a lot of the the name of the podcast was so easy for us mm -hmm. because it was like yeah we were raised by horror we weren't really raised by parents yes you know we were raised by romero you know like like that's that makes more sense to me so like as a kid, like I, I related harder to horror films than I did to any parental units or anything like that that weren't oh, around yeah. anyway. So, oh, yeah. and I, I feel like there's a lot of people like us who feel like horror raised them, or at least spiritually raised them, or even emotionally raised them. 
Mm -hmm. you know, like with all the ways that horror speaks to the different parts of our survival instincts and our psyches and our coping mechanisms and the way that we test ourselves and the way that we improve ourselves and the way we see the world. Yeah. So I think a lot of people were raised by horror and that's so, yeah. So that was like, that was an easy naming process for yes. sure. I yes. mean, you totally, totally handled the question I had for you both of like, where did you get the name for the podcast? And it's just, uh, that's oh. just phenomenal. <laughs> like, I love oh, it. That's awesome. I love it. Um, I, I guess for myself, I'm, I'm, I'm Scotland Simons. I'm, I'm an artist. Uh, I've worked in other places, but those aren't important. Um, and I, I wasn't necessarily raised by horror, but it was always around me. My mother was super obsessed with horror, still is obsessed with horror. Um, and so I remember as a child just being like, oh, gosh, what's on? Oh, no, I'm not watching this. And I would just like leave the room because it would just always terrify the living heck out of me. But I loved the gentler side of it. I loved the kooky, spooky, kind of like gently goth, creepy bits of it that were always just kind of fun and happy. And those became my friends. Like the Adams family was a thing that I just watched religiously. Mm -hmm. It was my friend. I loved the monsters. Like I loved it when it wasn't trying to decimate my emotional kind of state of being with fear but it was just mm -hmm. other uh you know it was just like i always felt like i belonged in the other group of like oh yeah. they're just the weird one out like that was my happy place and so i always gravitated towards um those things that had a bit of humor in it that always had a bit of like gentleness to it or just like a collective unit um and there were mm -hmm. several kind of fun little little things that I attach myself to on that one and that's that's just kind of who I am and so it's been a real pleasure to be um subjected to some interesting films <laughs> <laughs> we need what to make a su we need to make a super cut for you of like all the old hammer horror movies without okay. the scary part without the scariest parts <laughs> but just I'm the weird parts I'm super yes. into it I'm super yes. into it yes. I it would just be nothing but inspiration for me because yeah. like it, it's a joy like i am that's why i call myself like a baby bat like i enjoy <laughs> like i enjoy vampire gore but i don't want to be scared to pieces if that makes mm -hmm. sense it's very yeah. strange it's like no, on one hand perfect. i should be terrified but no but then it's we will perfect. introduce you to jean roland's french vampires which we, you oh, will yes. love okay <laughs> artsy vamps okay um, but it's it's perfect actually because and that's one of the reasons i love that you're on this show with us because a lot of, not a lot, well, a good amount of the impetus for us wanting to do this podcast and this show is that so many people approach horror from so many different places. Mm -hmm. And it's, there's, there's just a giant misconception that people are attracted to horror for certain reasons, because, you know, I mean, and of course, the negative connotations are people like horror because they're broken, or people right. like horror because they want to be traumatized, or, right. you know, it's the the person that, you know, with the hot sauce can't get enough hot sauce and then they until they set their face on fire and like, you know, just all of these like misconceptions about why people like horror and are interested. And, and the reality is that people come from so many different places and so many different perspectives. Mm -hmm. And horror is this wide genre. It's so multifaceted. It's it's got so much going on with it. It's not a one trick pony of any kind. It's not just jump scares. It's just it's not just slasher gore. You know, it's it's all these different aspects of art mm -hmm. and and feeling and community and experiences and having someone on the show with us who isn't who would be qualified probably as, you know, like someone who isn't into horror is perfect because I don't think you have to be into the ooky, you know, gross, icky, scary trauma stuff necessarily to be someone who appreciates horror. Why? So I'm oh. But I'm we will lure here. you. We will lure you further into the horror world. I'm into yes, it. We will. We will, will seduce you into the dark, into side. The dark side. Exactly. Yes. I am exactly. here to be seduced. I have paid my dues. <laughs> I'm. I'm ready. Uh, I have subscribed to the full seduction feed. So I'm. I'm ready. My body is ready. My mind is ready. So I'm. I'm really looking forward to it. And I'm hoping we could just take everybody with us on that journey too, mm -hmm. to, yes. to drive them into it. Well, that's It'll also be nice. part of. Oh, go ahead. Uh, it'd be nice because we want to talk about we want to talk about horror, but a lot of what we're, we want to talk about are not the most obvious horror movies. We're going to mm -hmm. have themes, but within those themes, we're not 
We're going to try and stay away from the really big names unless we need to give context. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we'd like to, yeah, we, we want to be, we want to be fun, but we also want to be a little educational too, without being pedantic. Mm -hmm. I'm into the education part of it because like so much of the backstory makes it more interesting for me too. Mm -hmm. Like knowing like, you know, why is this film interesting to you? And then the perspectives of like what you get out of it kind of shares with me and hopefully everybody else, the perspective on like how they could approach it or how they could mm -hmm. find something really interesting with it, which is rad. That makes me really mm -hmm. happy. Like, I love that. Kind of, It's that well, whole that's... goth community thing kind of, kind of yes. picking off sure. a little bit. <laughs> It speaks to a lot of also like when Richard and I were talking about doing this podcast, like um, a lot of it. So it came out of like where Richard and I would have just these long conversations on the phone, but then we started watching horror together on the phone, you know, living in different parts of the world, living on different time zones and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Like basically horror buddies that would get on the phone and click play at the same time <laughs> and watch something new or watch something different or or, mm -hmm. you know, watch a couple of things in a row. And the discussions that we would have about it were discussions we weren't really hearing anywhere else. Yeah. We were really, we were having these talks about, you know, the, the perspective of the art or or the, the, the odd little trivial bits of things or things that it reminded us of. And talking about things about the way that, the, the aspects of horror that we like and what works about horror and what doesn't work about horror and why those are tied into a lot of our shared values in terms of like sex positivity and all gender, all orientation perspectives. And that this was something that was really being missed from all of the discussions about horror books and horror films. Um, just not just the inclusiveness and approaching it from an inclusive perspective the way that we do, but also talking about why that's important and why that makes stories better. Yes. I like that Absolutely. a lot. I like that a lot because I think that was, that was always a big turnoff for me. was kind of the mainstreaming effect of a lot of the, Oh, it's the horror, you know, trilogy show or whatever, something like that. I, I know I've seen them on TV and I'm not going to say the names of what they are because they don't need the extra publicity, but like, you know, it's like the marathon of whatever. And it's like, it's kind of interesting, but they don't seem to really go that deep. And honestly, it mm -hmm. kind of feels more like a, like a mystery science theater at that point to me. It's just kind of like, mm -hmm. okay, but it's not funny because there's no, there's no additional context that people are applying to it. And it usually has like too, too sexist of a vibe or a theme that right. makes it even want me to like, enjoy it. I'm just like, oh, great. Another movie where women just get tortured and that's not really interesting to me like that's boring right exactly. yeah well and it's like you know the oh you know it, here's another horror story about a little boy and a little boy's journey i'm like i'm Ugh. give me some little girl's journey or some little they's journey yes or something that i can relate to a little bit more because i'm sick of that and you know and also richard and i were having these discussions very passionate discussions about like okay, like when we get to that part in this horror film that we're, you know, just starting to watch and we find out that the reason that the bad evil person is bad and evil is because they're a cross-dresser or they're trans, we're just oh, like, yeah. th like, that's stupid. Like, that's just, that doesn't even make it's sense lazy. anymore. It's, it's lazy. Exactly. It's lazy. It's, it's garbage. Bad, it's bad fucking storytelling. You know, it's just, it's shorthand and it just tells me the rest of it's going to be crap. And with Richard and I like instantly agreeing on things like that, we were like, yeah, okay. So we know we're not the only ones that are feeling yeah. this way. And we want to talk about that. And we want to talk about why. That's so, so rad. Yeah. 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 Thank you. That's, that's and, so and... rad. <laughs> <laughs> we just, I mean, we want the good stuff and not the dumb stuff. And, and the exactly. sort of cross dressing horror is the dumb stuff. That's mm -hmm. sort of, I mean, that's so 1980s in it's the so dated. worst way. Oh my it's God. the worst stuff. Yeah, that it's and it's just some unrealistic bullshit these days yeah. because we know that you know we these are our friends you're talking about you know right. like these are our family mm -hmm. you know like don't tell me the slasher's gay because that's my bestie you know like mm -hmm. that just and doesn't it, work anymore so 
it's like a character can have these other attributes to themselves, but when that becomes the driver for the narrative, I just kind of exactly. want to tell you to just go away and try harder because you just failed. <laughs> you failed right? at everything you've done. Like, did, yeah. did, I'm sorry. That's not scary. And if you are scared of that, exactly, maybe it's time to sit down have a glass of water, look in a mirror and reflect on who you are as a person and what you value in life. Because I'm just saying, I'm just putting it out it, there. Right. If your killer is, <laughs> if the reason your killer is evil is because they're gay is like, yeah, you need, you, that's a you thing. That's yeah. A you thing. <laughs> yeah. There's so much more interesting narrative out there. Like, uh, and, exactly. and that's, that's, that's kind of like what made me really interested about hearing um, this idea that you both came up with about talking about this. I was like, oh man, sign me up. Yes. Nice. Yes. Nice. Yeah. I'm terrified of half of the movies that are probably going to be talked about or more, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. At yeah. least we can be scared together. <laughs> there you go. That's, that's well, yeah. kind of where I'm too, with it. In our, in our conversations too, um, leading up to the show was that. Richard and I were finding that we were disagreeing on shows or we were we would disagree mm -hmm. on a film you know he would be like oh my god this is like the most amazing uh it's <laughs> mind-blowing it's my inspiration for this and blah 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 and I'd be like yeah I don't like it yes. you know and <laughs> and rather than us being like you're wrong you know we were just more like why like yeah I don't like this thing but I want to know why you do because that's really interesting. So it's, mm -hmm. we wanted to have that also in a show where people disagreed about the art that was being discussed, but it wasn't a hostile disagreement. It was a, right. it, it's a creative disagreement where it's like, okay, expand my mind. Tell me, tell me why you like it so much, mm -hmm. you know, or, or tell me why you hate this film that I love, because I'm really curious that maybe there's something I'm missing. Maybe there's a perspective that I'm not seeing. Mm -hmm. And these discussions exactly. have like opened up so many films for me in ways and, and also horror TV shows and horror books that we've talked about too, where I've just been like, wow, I never thought about it that way. Mm -hmm. And it's, that's great. It's like, it's a discussion as a gift because it's like, I, I can re-experience this art in a new way. Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's what art should be. It should be discussion. It should be uh, a shared experience whether you agree or understand the thing the same way i mean i think that's mm -hmm. sometimes disagreement Absolutely. isn't necessarily disagreement it's just seeing the same thing from a slightly different perspective mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then when you can understand each other's perspective it's not you realize it's not a disagreement it's just it's just coming at a thing from a slightly different angle and when you can learn the other angle i think it makes everything more interesting Absolutely. Absolutely. And I mean, like any, any horror nerd, like I want, I want more, I want new stuff. I want discovery, yep. you know, and, and that's the hardest thing to find on the internet these days is any kind of discovery, right? Because everything mm -hmm. we're dealing with online, like all the ways that we used to discover music and the ways we used to discover film and, and TV and stuff like that is just like, it's recursive and it's really difficult. It's really mm -hmm. hard to find new stuff. And so like anything that helps me do discovery is amazing. And that's another yeah. thing we really wanted to do with this show is make sure that we're, we're introducing people to new stuff or maybe showing them a different perspective on something. Mm -hmm. And at the end of each show, we also close with things we're looking forward to. So yeah. mm -hmm. films that are coming out, books that are coming out. So we're doing a lot of the like discovery to help people find new stuff as well. Mm -hmm. So, cause that's what I want in a show. <laughs> Right. But we'll talk about old stuff too that's important <laughs> um yes to give context to certain themes and we want to have we're going to not just talk about films we're going to talk about film themes at different mm -hmm. episodes like folk horror uh books to horror films that terrified us as kids films mm -hmm. that terrified us as, as adults mm -hmm. um horror one i'm looking forward to that we're going to do is horror that should have won an oscar because yes. there's oh, some that's Brad. horror out yes. there and even in not the best movies individual performances mm -hmm. that were amazing mm -hmm. um i think that'll be a real fun one for people it'll be fun Absolutely. for me at least 
I'm excited oh, for that one. Are you kidding me? I want to I want to kind of discover that. I mean, like I'm going to try and give my own slice of a little bit of tiny little slivers of levity here and there uh, and 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 hopefully provide my perspective on like if, if things are really actually genuinely terrifying and where <laughs> where where my limits are. And I think that's fun for people to kind of calibrate against um the 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 mm -hmm. non horror uh like enveloped as, as she says that as as I'm wearing a satanic floppy disk shirt <laughs> i know i don't look also, the part i guess i could dress more square i i, I maybe that will help no it won't help <laughs> no but I, I i mentioned this in one of the episodes um that uh one of our themes is actually um horror films to watch with people who don't like horror because yes. I like the idea of us doing themes that are applicable to a bunch of different situations and and people where people approach horror from different perspectives. So that's and that's a fun one. And that's a, that's a lot of like these are the films I would pick to watch with Scotland kind of mm -hmm. stuff, you know, where it's like, OK, these are these are maybe not necessarily always gentle horror films, but they're fun and they're mm -hmm. weird and, you know, they're not they're not traumatic. They're, the, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> and even even if they're if they even if they go a little hard at times there might there's there'll be something thematically mm -hmm. that's that's yeah. extra about them so it's not just monsters it's monsters plus interesting again interesting perspectives coming from a different direction um i can think of a couple of films that i won't mention right now but i think that are <laughs> scary but i think scotland might enjoy and oh, we'll introduce this. her to them. Excellent. <laughs> it's funny that we're like, hmm, not going to mention those right now because we're right. when we do the show. We're very like, okay, look, we're doing spoilers. Like, yes, let's just get that out of the way. Like, mm -hmm. each show is going to be we're we're talking about these films. We're not withholding anything for the end. So when you watch our show, we're we're talking about the whole film. So if there's like a film that you're interested in that you haven't seen yet that you don't want spoilers for, you're going to need to click to the next section for right. sure. <laughs> don't watch it. Go watch the film first. Get scared out of your pants. First. Yeah. And then that's, come back. That's an option. Yep. Yeah. What's, what's or, great? You know, I, I, at, at times I want to lead you up to the, to the end of the movie, but not, but not give it to you to 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 get you to watch the movie so we'll have spoilers but we're gonna leave you dangling a little bit we're gonna leave you dangling it's a tease it's it'll be a tease at times it's a horror tease a little horror tease i mean yeah. i can yeah. i can see the t-shirts for that now um, so it's <laughs> raised by horror horror tease Aww. it'd be kind of cute i'm into it yeah. i'm really really into it so right. we so have when, merchandising already. I, I know it's coming. It's coming. Just yeah. give it time. Oh my God. So like when you two sat down and you're like, all right, we love this stuff. We're into it. And you're putting, you know, kind of the, the, the pieces together to, to get to this, this podcast and this idea, like, do you want to share a little bit about the, the, the narrative that you two had at that time? Or like, it was kind of like, well, the name came so easily. Did the whole concept come so easily? Well, we had the concept before the name, yeah, and I and I think it did come pretty easily, because it was it was more like, hey, our we're having these discussions, and these would be really fun to have with an audience and mm -hmm. with a wider community, and and it just kind of came really naturally. Yeah. at that point because it was kind of something we were already doing and we were already just geeking the fuck out on themes you know mm -hmm. like oh wouldn't it be cool to talk about horror books that were made into films and like what worked and what didn't and what our favorites are and you know what's what's fun and what sucks and what inspired us from these and i mean mm -hmm. our our list of upcoming show mm -hmm. themes is so long it's just yes. ridiculous um, because we have so many things we want to talk about but mm -hmm. that's I mean it was fairly I think fairly easy yeah because it, it it felt like something we were already doing and just wanted to to open it up and grow it basically yeah. does that make sense it totally does it okay. totally totally does <laughs> and with like, Scotland here I think it really opens things up more 
in terms of we talk to each other about horror all the time. We know all the sort of shorthand. Mm -hmm. But Scotland doesn't, and Scotland yeah. doesn't necessarily want to. No, <laughs> not, not all the time. <laughs> not all the time. But she's good with boundaries. Uh, and, uh -huh. <laughs> and we're really good at respecting boundaries, which is also yeah, something we can do the time we talk out. <laughs> about. Yeah, exactly. The yeah. X. But um, but that's also another thing, too, is that we another aspect of this show that Richard and I talked about that we hadn't seen in other shows is that we respect boundaries. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Like we respect each other's horror boundaries. So if I'm like, yeah, I really there's this one French extreme and I don't want to watch it because I just don't need to go there. It's going to be too traumatic. Like no one's mm -hmm. no one's going to push me. No right. one's going to be like, oh, but you just haven't or actually or anything like that. It's more like, yo, that's a boundary. There's yeah. a reason that's there. We respect it. So yeah. and that's that's something that I think should be in more shows like this where people talk about films that could be triggering and talk yes. about films that are about traumas and films that do you know push our relationship to our mental health and challenge us mm -hmm. you know like that's that's where the boundaries are even more important so and we have some personal boundaries for the show that we should yeah. probably say up front we do. one of the big ones is animal cruelty mm-hmm Films of animal cruelty, you can just say goodbye to. We're just not going to deal with it. Yeah. Um, if your lazy ass trope in your film is the serial killer kills a kitten and that shows nope. the audience why he's bad, I'm like, A, you're a lazy writer. Go back, go back to school. Yeah. Go back to go back to the drawing board because that's that's a lazy ass horror shorthand, you know, of the murdering the, you know, animals or whatever. Like, show me, tell me that story in a better way. Tell me in a different right. way. But also, no animal harm. Come on. Like. It's not necessary. Know. It's yeah. not necessary. Like, what context does it set? You know, like, it, it sets that you're horrible and then you're okay with these themes. Like, mm -hmm. there are yeah. responsible ways to do it. And I have seen certain films and books that re deal with it in a responsible way. Oh, yes. Yeah. <sighs> but it's yeah, not if it's, often. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's got to be, it's got to be actual storytelling. Yeah. You know, it's got to be like, okay, this is, this is a, a, like, I forgot I was, you know, I was outside of the story kind of storytelling, you know, something that pulls you in so much. It's got to be good. Mm -hmm. But, um, but for the most part, no, I mean, it, all three of us too, we're, we're big cat lovers. So yeah. no, no cats get harmed in no. anything that we do. No, please. <laughs> Not interested. Yep. No. Not interested. No. Or anything, you know, um, um, puppies, mm -hmm. you know, goldfish, gorillas. Mm -hmm. Per personally no. i'll also throw in there like i don't like it when people heat you know just hurt our animals that are you know people often see as like oh it's a bat or it's a snake like yeah i like bats right. and snakes i think they're great but don't hurt yeah. them <laughs> like no I, i'm not I, I think it's a great boundary uh and i'm yeah. i'm glad it exists like are, are there yeah. any other areas that like are are, are no go zones? Like I, I know we each have our own personal boundaries, um, and we mm -hmm. generally will talk about those in situ, um, because I think it's yeah. good to, to kind of just reiterate those. If it's like, ooh, this 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 area touches on something that's um, a bit personally touchy for me, I'm going to just mm -hmm. time out on that. Like I don't know if there's any that we want to call out now, and that's okay if we don't have any. Um, I think it's just, uh, it's good to know for the audience at home that mm -hmm. we will call this stuff out. Um, mm -hmm. And we will do as much of it as we can because a lot of these films are interesting to yeah. say the least I, in terms of their yeah. topics. No, we're, you know, we, we endeavor to do content warnings. We're definitely yeah. the content warning crew. So yeah. no one is taken by surprise um, by anything that might be, that might be, that might hurt their psyche, you know, that might be harmful to them. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, so for me, it's like, I know I'll never be interested in or reviewing any films about that, that you know, where the, the main theme is the parent is an abusive drug addict. Mm -hmm. And I just, that's my, I know about at that. That's a nope. Um, yeah. That's not going to be a film that I'm interested in talking about. So, yeah. 
Um, and I think one of the discussions Richard and I had too prior to starting the podcast was the context of sexual assault in horror. Yes, that's a big one. That's a big one. Because it's a big one. And it's it's also similar to the, you know, bad guy kills animals trope. It's 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 something that's trotted out as right. as an excuse for writing an actual storyline or an excuse for actually writing a, a full character, in mm -hmm. my opinion. Like it's it's lazy, but it's also generally uh, it's a it's a sexist insert that's in a lot of horror films where it's like mm -hmm. oh and now this is where she has to get assaulted you know right. or she's a serial she she kills because she got assaulted that's the big know? one that's the oh, real big one right there it's the biggest pile of trash because you know patrick bateman in psycho wasn't you know sexually abused or sexually assaulted he's just a serial killer yeah you know yeah so, yeah, absolutely so a lot less um there that's a thing that we don't have a lot of tolerance for yeah absolutely sexual assault and horror because it's just it, from a storytelling perspective it's it's seldom necessary exactly if ever and also it's it's just gross to keep perpetuating it as a as a normal thing that should be part of the female experience in horror or the, or or any gender experience in, in horror period like that let's stop normalizing that shit in horror yeah. already yeah better stuff there's mm -hmm. way better stuff way more better interesting stuff yeah yeah there's a lot of imagination out there we don't need to fall back on these old dumb tropes and that's what they are they're dumb yep they're dumb and they perpetuate harms yeah so out but in the corner with the trash knowing that stuff and knowing we have those kind of like set boundaries we know a little bit more about us and we know a little bit more about kind of the show and kind of like what what can we entice everyone with what might be coming and richard i know you mentioned a moment ago kind of some of those areas some of those themes about you know you know films that scared you as children and ones that scare you as adults but what what other things might be might be that we can tantalize people with well one is we are going to do a, a holiday horror show and I'm, excited. and I'm excited for that one too i think we have a lot of good amusing stuff amusing horror uh and a lot of really creepy horror around the holidays so i think that'll be a really interesting show for people yeah because the holidays are creepy just yes straight up Period. historically and currently like they're just creepy it's and it's also feel good horror too sometimes and there's, so. absolutely <laughs> absolutely mm -hmm. i'm thinking of and, one of the ones that i know that you and i watched last year and it yeah it was yeah mm -hmm. it's pretty happy <laughs> yeah yeah we will be, be we will be doing that one and you will know what it is very soon it's a yes. very fun movie with horror yes. with horror with violence with craziness, mm -hmm. with bad people. Mm -hmm. You can do all that stuff and still have a feel-good movie in the end. And that's oh, totally. That's the stuff we want to get into. Yep. I'm excited. I'm excited. <laughs> and I know we have like, we even have like guests and stuff planned in the future. So I know yep. that'll be exciting for everyone um, mm -hmm. as we kind of dip into the treasure trove of the wonderful, wonderful guests that might be coming this way. I cannot say anymore. I'm yes. sworn to secrecy. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, that some sort of horror will be unleashed on me, and I'm not willing. I'm just not willing to deal with it. I already deal with enough horror from the dog, so I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we have some really fun, exciting things coming up. Um, we're going to do some talking about found footage. We're going down yes. the, the found footage, mm -hmm. um, nerdy rabbit hole, and we. I mean, just so much stuff folk horror because oh close to my heart i love folk horror yeah uh, we already mentioned um films that should have won an oscar as well mm -hmm. and, and we want to do the opposite of folk horror too the city as horror yes cool yes yeah because we love the the concept of the 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 place is alive yes right yeah that's rad i'm excited yeah. for this yeah and we're going to do female killers. I believe we mm -hmm. have a we have a, a queer episode planned as well. Absolutely. Queer horror. Um, what else? God, we have like a super long list. 
uh cosmic horror um yes, anthology uh, movies um yeah. oh and we want to do some regional ones kiwi horror australia yeah. australia yep. is having a real renaissance in yes. horror right now so you want to bring in as many of those as we can and even some older okay. ones that you might not have heard of yes absolutely. exciting deeply mm-hmm. deeply exciting <laughs> um so for people to learn more about this show of course they're watching or listening to it now um we'll be uh broadcasting this on youtube and uh we'll also be simulcasting it through most of your standard places that you can find podcasts that'll all be in the link description below so be able to get uh it in the format that pleases you the most um Mm -hmm. but uh, we have some other locations violet uh we we have a a blog and uh do you want to talk about any of that uh, we have raisedbyhorror.com, which is also, we have a Tumblr, um, where we're going to be doing um, basically show notes on each show. Um, there's also some background on us and links to our stuff. So, you know, buy our stuff. Please. Um, <laughs> this show is a labor of love. Yeah. We are not getting paid to do this, at least at this point. Um, but <laughs> this is just something we're doing because we love it. And we have a donations page if you want to contribute to you know, equipment, gear, the time that we're spending doing all of this stuff, taking time out of our schedules. Um, so all of that stuff can be found on the Tumblr. We have a, a Ko-Fi, is that how you pronounce it? Coffee? Ko-Fi? Ko-Fi? I think it's Ko-Fi. No, no. That's, that's what I say. I think I say Ko-Fi. Okay, we have one of those. And that that's a, that's a fund that's directly for the show. Um, and yeah, we're going to be doing show notes. We're going to be doing show lists and like just intermittent blog posts about fun mm-hmm. stuff to discover in the meantime about horror um, and also things that we might have wanted to talk about that we forgot so like yes. if we do an episode of like you know here are the four films that scared the shit out of me as a kid and then mm-hmm. i'm like oh but i forgot to mention these three films we're gonna put that in in the blog post about the yeah. show it'll be in the show notes so yeah we're always going to have more films in the notes than we did on the show I think pretty much always because yeah. yeah, we have we have big lists. <laughs> we have big lists. Yep. Yep. It's, it's like hoarders, right? Yes. But like horror films in our brains. <laughs> it's probably gonna horrify me to learn the amount of horror films that actually exist that I'm not even aware of. Yeah, don't look oh. at our themes list. It's just like insanely long. <laughs> yeah. It's like- we just it's em- it's embarrassingly long realizing like have i really watched that much horror of cr- in my life yes i have it. and I we know. keep we keep finding more that's so good that's so good yeah like uh i i i absolutely can't wait and, and, and that thinking of that list brings up a weird visceral image too from my childhood of um there was a video store back when video i know everybody oh video stores <laughs> oh. were a thing and they were rad um and also dumb but there was one that was themed the whole video store was themed it was massive it was um you go to the space section it was like space themed or yes. the romance oh. section was like romance themed and they had a horror section that had a haunted house the floor that would like move and stuff like that and like oh weird, that's brilliant like monster that would come out and get you and i just I uh, just hearing the huge list just reminds me of I've probably seen many of these titles and blocked it out. So that's this is great. This is great. <laughs> I, 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 we're just going right back into um, uh, com, uh, handling trauma with friends. <laughs> yes, I can't even speak. I mean, that's, it's I mean, that's what a lot of horror is, though, too. It's it's like how we process trauma. So, mm-hmm. you know, and what what better way than to do it with a friend? Oh, I'm yes. excited. I'm really excited. <laughs> Well, um, we're looking forward to taking everyone on this journey with uh, uh, with us and to take you through all of these films and all of these different thematics. Uh, we're, we're looking at releasing uh, uh, our next episode on films that scared us as kids. So stay on the lookout for that. Um, and I want to pass it over to Richard and Violet, any kind of like parting words. And this is really just an intro for everybody, but uh, we hope you come along on this adventure. Please join us. This is going to be weird and fun and silly and bizarre <laughs> and just a, a road of discovery and discussions about horror films that you won't see anywhere else at all. Mm-hmm. What she said, plus <laughs> we 
we will try to make everything as fun and informative along the way as we can because we really want to dig into what these films are besides just oh look that was the monster we want to find out what what went on behind the scenes when we can and that's been fun part of our research for each show it's so cool i'm really excited and i know that we are looking forward to everyone joining us and we cannot wait for you uh, to subscribe and add this to your favorites and uh, bookmark the site. I don't know how people do the internet anymore. I've given up. So <laughs> here we are. Uh, we look forward to it. And thank you so much for stopping by. And please uh, check out our links. Bye, everybody. See you later. Bye. How do I stop the recording?